Did you know that everything in the world is made up from very small particles called atoms? What? That lot? You, me, our clothes? Even my drink are all made up from atoms? Yeah, let me demonstrate. Nice watch. Thanks. If we zoom in really close to your watch and take a look at the metal frame, we can see it's made up out of particles. Nice shiny ones. And because it's a solid, the particles have strong forces of attraction. Strong forces of attraction are where the particles are held in fixed positions and are packed closely together. Exactly. Whereas in your drink, the particles only have moderate forces of attraction. Moderate forces of attraction mean that particles in a liquid can move around much more, so they slide around in layers. <laughs> OK. Now, what about the particles in air? Well, air's a gas, so the particles are free to move around. Right. The particles in gases have no forces of attraction, which means they can really spread out. So what's all this got to do with chemistry? It is chemistry. But what are chemicals? Well, all chemicals are made up from the elements. The what? The elements. There are about a hundred of them, and they're all found in the periodic table. Oh yeah, I remember that. Some elements are solids, like copper. Some are liquids, like mercury. And some are gases, like helium. Everything in the world is made up of at least one of these elements. So these 100 elements make up everything? You, me, our clothes, my watch? Yes. Absolutely everything is composed of one or more of these elements. So what are the elements made from? All elements are made from these three particles. Protons, neutrons and electrons, which together form an atom. If we take two from here, two from here, and you take two from there. So what do we do now? Just throw them up into the air, and they'll make an atom. So protons and neutrons are in the middle of the atom? Yes, and we call the middle of the atom the nucleus. So I guess those small blue spheres moving around the nucleus are the electrons? That's right. The electrons always travel around the nucleus. So what's the difference between protons and neutrons? Good question. There. Caught it. Now, this is a proton. It has a positive charge, and it only weighs a tiny amount, which we call one mass unit. So a proton only weighs one mass unit, and we write this as 1 mu. That's right. This is a neutron. It has a neutral charge, which means no charge. It also has a mass of 1 mu. Like the proton. Right. These two particles are the only ones found inside the nucleus. So protons and neutrons are both found in the nucleus, and both have a mass of 1 mu. But protons have a positive charge, and neutrons have no charge? That's it. Electrons are the third type of particle and the smallest. An electron has a negative charge and has a mass of 1 2,000th of a mass unit. One two thousandth. So two thousand electrons weigh the same as one proton? Exactly. The mass of an electron is tiny compared to the mass of a proton or neutron. And do all electrons orbit the nucleus within a shell like that? Yep. But some atoms have more electrons and more shells. But we'll find out about those ones later on. So to recap, Chemistry tells us that all atoms are made up of protons, neutrons and electrons, while different atoms have different numbers of protons, neutrons and electrons. Yep. These are the basic facts you need to know in order to understand elements and atomic structure.
Right, I'm beginning to understand what atoms contain and how they make up absolutely everything. 